Welcome back to Tech S City. This is the doc coming back to you guys today with an AMD graphics card review. This is the AMD R9 270. Now, this is from a brand called Kurotoshiki, I think, and they're a JDM brand. That means they're a Japanese domestic market brand. So you won't find them anywhere else in the world. Now, uh, when I first unboxed this thing, I was a little bit kind of um, surprised. I mean, it came boxed really light. Uh, there was absolutely there was like no accessories included in the box. It was just pretty much a graphics card and a CD driver, and that was it. Um, picking up the card itself, it kind of felt a little bit lightweight. I mean, I thought the cooler could have definitely, you know, definitely after picking up this brand, I can see why it's cheaper. I mean, it was the cheapest R9 270 I could find, and I can definitely see why people prefer to go with Gigabyte or Asus models over this particular brand because the coolers are just heavier, they feel better built. Uh, not to say, I mean, this thing didn't feel too bad built, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't shake, it feels pretty solid, but it does have that feeling of um, a little bit of a cheap feeling to it. So that's something I didn't like about this particular uh, vendor. However, let's move on now, we'll move on. So I've done a heap of benchmarking and, I've also, and I'm also going to be um, splitting this video into two. So I'm gonna be doing some mantle benchmarks on this card comparing this card against the uh, DirectX 11 against Mantle and seeing the performance differences. But however, this video here is just the review of the R9 270 and I'm gonna be comparing this against the GDX 780. I know it's not a fair comparison, but it'll just give you some reference points anyway. And also one more thing before we jump onto the benchmarks is that the R9 270 and the R9 270X, there are um, not many differences. They're essentially the same graphics card, just the R9 270 is cheaper and it's clocked lower than an R9 270X. Now an important thing that I noticed when I was overclocking, this was actually capped in the BIOS to uh, 1.05 GHz or 1050 MHz. So it had a cap in it, it didn't have any voltage unlocked controls so I couldn't find any voltage unlocking controls in there and yeah that was I guess that's the main difference so if you want to get the maximum potential out of this card you have to flash the BIOS uh, so anyway let's move on with the benchmarks now so for gaming benchmarks I just decided to quickly test two graphically intensive games they are Battlefield 4 and Crisis 3 now both of these games are generally optimized for AMD graphics cards as well so uh, I tested the reference speeds here and we're just going to look at the average because the average on Battlefield 4 single player was 65.84 uh, and then the average when I overclocked it was 72.88. Now that was actually pretty impressive. That, As you can see there, the overclock pretty much scaled. And what I had the overclock, I'll put the overclock and the reference clocks in the description below, but essentially the overclock was about 100 megahertz over the reference overclock uh, reference clocks so the overclock scaled really well and you're gonna see this throughout this whole um, look at these at these scores the reference 780 uh, lightning I've got them confused sorry the 780 lightning reference was 142.6 and when I overclocked it in battlefield 3 it scored 153.2 now for crisis 3 when we move over to crisis 3 we had on ultra uh, one times SMAA enabled at 1080p, we had 26.52. And also we had 30 uh, when we overclocked it. So again, we can see that the overclock on this card scaled really well. It was actually good. I really liked If you're going to get an R9 270, then definitely be overclocking this thing uh, as, my, as high as it can go. Now, when we looked at the uh, Crisis 3 for the NVIDIA reference, we had 60.24 and then we had 67.2. So again, the... Uh, GDX 780 was scaling as well and was a bit of a beast and you're probably like why did you show this well I'm just showing you guys this is the other card I have to compare it to so you guys can get an idea of value for money and this card the R9 270 definitely does um, stack up as a very excellent value for money card now keep in mind that crisis 3 also I mean on ultra this thing is just a beast so the fact that the R9 270 can do 30 FPS is actually really impressive so that was actually good if you scale these settings down to medium or high you'll still have a really good experience at around 60 FPS now I'm not going to really test 1440p because I think you should have a better graphics card if you want to game at 1440p I'd say something like at least an R9 280x um, so uh, let's move on now to Unigine Valley because we've got a few different scores here we've got the power consumption now when I tested this uh, I'm also going to quickly say under idle there wasn't much of a difference between this and the GDX 780 they both idled at around 110 watts on my overclocked 4670k at 4.6 gigs and it's also overclocked 
the RAM's overclocked to 2000 megahertz for these particular tests. Now we have here R9 270 reference. It was under load. It was drawing 326 watts. This is total uh, consumption. You got to remember this is total power consumption of my whole rig. Uh, under load, uh, when I overclocked it, it went up to 341 watts. This is under Unigine Valley Extreme HD. Uh, so there was about a 15 watt difference in power consumption, which actually wasn't, I mean, that 15 watts is damn worth it. So if you're a gamer, you should definitely, again, be overclocking this graphics card. An extra 15 watts for like an extra 10% performance was really impressive. Uh, same with the GDX 780, although the GDX 780 just started to actually chew a lot more power. I mean, it chewed a, an extra 50 watts over the reference um, speeds which was actually pretty surprising but I mean again that was a good extra almost 10% increase as well so this has got kind of fair value in total power consumption of the rig when I'm gaming in uh, graphically intensive games so definitely with the R9 270 you definitely do want to overclock it and get the max uh, FPS you can out of this card because won't be usually it won't be using that much power let's move on now to unigine valley uh the scores okay so this is obviously this benchmark is known to be nvidia favored benchmark so don't be too worried but i'm just giving you an idea mainly of the scores of the overclock settings here so essentially we had um unigine valley extreme hd it scored a 13 13 with uh, an average fps of 31.4 and then when I overclocked it, it scored an average FPS of 34.2. So that was actually really impressive. Um, this the Again, the overclock scaled pretty much like in a straight linear line, which was actually really good. And it scored 14.30 as well. So uh, as you can see here, the, it, it, the overclock on this thing was nice and smooth. Uh, something to note about, about the overclock though is I could only max it out at 10, uh, 1050 megahertz. So it just wouldn't go over that. I think it's BIOS locked. Uh, at that so uh, when we move on to the 780 the GDX 780 is obviously a beast of a card I mean obviously it commands a beast price as well but when we saw the average here it scored 66.6 .6, so there's the devil's address right there uh, when we move over to overclocked it scored 73.8 this is on extreme HD 1080p and the scores were 2789 and 3087 respectively so it did really well the 780 but uh, these scores here I'm going to be adding in the um, also going to be adding in the 750 Ti if I get to purchase it in the near future so I'm going to be keeping these benchmark scores here okay so moving on now to the uh, 3D Mark scores. I will just show you guys these score the slides directly. Um, ignore that system info is too old. I'm just I have a version that's a few months old and I couldn't be bothered updating it. But uh, we have here the graphics score 7,570, and this is with the CPU clocked at 4.6 gigs. The RAM's also clocked at 2,000 as well, uh, 2,000 megahertz. So. Uh, the physics score there represents that it's a pretty beast physics score for 4670k. Uh, when we overclocked the four, when we overclocked the R9 270, we saw the graphics score was 8306. So it scaled pretty much in a straight line upwards, which was really impressive. So again, you want to overclock your R9 270 if you have it. Uh, the physics score was a little bit higher for some reason this time around as well, at 4.6 gigs and 2,000 megahertz memory. Um, when we move over to now to the lightning, this scored on reference, it scored 14,282, not the best score for a GDX 780, but the physics score was 9,280, again it was a little bit low, um, this was clocked at 4.6 gigs and I think the memory was at 2,000 as well, uh, this was the, my, this is my usual, um, here's my usual, this is what I usually run my rig at, this is my GDX 780 overclocked, uh, it scored 16,221, which is a beast graphics score. That's pretty much as high as a 780 Ti, um, what some of the reference overclocked models. The physics score was higher as well, so it managed to score 9,548 at 4.6 gigs. Uh, so this was a pretty, the 780 Lightning was a bit of a beast, so when it was overclocked. Anyway, let's move on now to the conclusion, where I'll talk about a few different things. So, in conclusion, this card is great value for money. Uh, I thought there were some things that also, I'm going to talk about some little things that I noticed. Uh, jumping back on an AMD card, um, especially in like Battlefield 4, when I 
compared it directly to my 780. I mean, I did put it on low settings for this. I noticed there was the occasional AMD micro stutter. I mean, that still kind of plagues the card. I mean, this card anyway. So there was that occasional micro stutter. And another thing as well, I'll talk about it in Mantle, in the Mantle video. When I put this on Mantle, there was some um, really big like um, drops in frame rates that weren't measured on the um, frame uh, FPS calculating tool so I don't know what was going on there but um, essentially it's not a bad card for $190 I mean if you're in the States you definitely want to get the twin frozen model I think that's $180 so I mean there's some options there I'd probably recommend sticking to a better brand this brand here was kind of the but real budget end I mean it wasn't bad but when I overclocked it uh, something I didn't mention as well is that the heat the heat pipe here even though it only said 70 degrees, this thing got really hot to touch. Uh, this heat pipe here was like, ah! So I haven't had that in my rig for a very long time, that actual really sizzling hot touch. So something that this card did, I mean, I'd say it's just unique because this cool is probably not the best, but... Uh, all in all, it's, it's a good card for the money. I can see myself recommending these things. Uh, the next step up would probably be a GDX uh, 760. I may buy a 750 Ti as well, since I've got these benchmarks here. I can then compare the 750 Ti to these benchmarks. And another good thing about this is, is that the overclocks, as you guys saw, scaled really well. So if you get a 790, you want to pretty much overclock it to at least 70, um, 270x speeds. So... Uh, that's something you'll want to do. So it's a good card for the money, uh, and I really enjoyed it. So if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech Yes City, and I'll come back to you guys with a mantle video very soon. Anyway, peace out for now. Bye.